This is a Worsley Sun Helmet. Wrapped around top of it is something called a puggery. Puggeries were first invented in the mid-19th century to provide the wearer with a little extra sun and saber protection. As you can see, they share a striking similarity to turbans. Wonder where that idea was sourced from. Now, in the 21st century, they merely exist to be the bane of myself and Chris the Redcoat's primordial existence. When it comes to British sun helmets, the Wosley in particular, the big and elaborate puggeries are one of the most iconic features. The problem is today that most reproduction helmets feature a puggery that's kind of lackluster, if a puggery is featured at all. For myself, I tend to buy Wosley sun helmets that were made during the Second World War. Now this also poses a problem because the helmets that were produced during the war actually feature a puggery that is too small for most things you might want to represent. I choose them because they're slightly less collectible and they're a little bit cheaper than pre-war helmets. And when you're going out for any sort of reenacting or historical shooting, I personally feel less guilty uh, for trudging them through whatever I'm going through. They're also cool to have because they are then original helmets, but aside from that, they also do have a slightly better shape than the reproduction helmets. The reproduction helmets aren't bad, just some of the geometry seems to be off here and there in places. So if you want to portray something in the First World War, the interwar years, or almost anything during the Second World War, you're going to need a Wosley with a more elaborate puggery. So to have a more elaborate puggery, you need to fold one yourself. Well, how do you do that? Now, there isn't a whole lot of information online at all about how to wrap your own puggery. So I kind of had to look around the internet at original Wosleys and kind of look at them closely to see how they might have actually been wrapped. There are some people who do wrap them today, uh, commercially, but they do it in a way that is actual pieces of cloth that are wrapped around one time. They're just about that big. But I wanted to do it in the most accurate way possible, which is having a length of cloth and then you wrap it around like so. So after looking at photos of original examples, I kind of developed a way that I think is as close as possible to wrapping a puggery with the documentation and stuff that I have available to me. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. So that way you can learn to wrap your own puggery for whatever kind of pith helmet, sun helmet, etc., that you might have that might need a puggery. So let's go. Oh, and alternatively, you could buy a pre-Second World War Wosley that has a beautiful elaborate puggery, but they're pretty hard to find and they're not the cheapest thing. But God, I would love to have one, though not so much necessary for historical shooting or reenacting, but just to have for the collection because they're really cool. So anyway, let's actually wrap the puggery. So the first thing you're going to need when making a puggery is you need a sun helmet to wrap a puggery around. Now, in this instance, I will be using my 1942 Moors of London felted Wosley, but obviously this will work for any Wosley that you have, repro, etc., original. Um, so yeah, this is the Wosley I'll be using. You're going to need a material to make the puggery out of. So for this, I have some cotton fabric from Joann's, which is our local fabric store. Um, it's not the best, best thing, but it is kind of the best thing that we could find. Um, if you're going to be making a puggery, I suggest finding the uh, cotton fabric that is uh, as stretchy as possible and is obviously a little darker than this. Again, though, this is just the best thing that we could find at the Joann's fabric. Now I'm using cotton as it is the most accurate cloth according to the Big Book of Wosley, the Wosley helmet from Omdurman to El Alamein. Though linen is not the most common fabric that puggeries were made out of, you could use it and it, it will have the same effect if you get the right stuff. And actually some of the linen I've seen has a better color than most of the cotton that I've ever seen and been able to find. We're living in the 21st century, so we're not always gonna have the same access to certain kinds of cloth and materials that they necessarily would have had 80 years ago, 
100 years ago, etc. So use the best thing you can find, and if it has a proper and good look, then use it. Now the total length of this fabric is 18 feet. And this allows me to get about eight wraps around the helmet. Now, the most common number of wraps around the helmet is actually nine. That's what I was going for, but this is a little too short. So what I would recommend doing is getting about 21 feet of fabric, and that should get you to that most common nine wraps around the helmet. But I have this 18 foot piece of cloth, so I'm going to have to deal with it as I'm not gonna just throw this away, it'd be kind of stupid. Now this is a yard, or for you European people, a meter wide. So you're actually able to get about six whole puggeries out of your 18, or in the case that you probably should be using 21 foot long piece of cloth. So if you're gonna do this, maybe you and your mates have a bunch of, a bunch of helmets. Well, there you go. There's six puggeries out of one piece of X amount of cloth. Now, you're also going to need a few things to actually help you make the puggery. One of those is a long straight edge, this one being a 1950s oil company's uh, ruler. If you do not have a 1950s oil company ruler, any regular yardstick or meter stick will work just fine. You're also going to need a ruler. I will be using uh, imperial measurements, so you're just gonna have to deal with that. You're going to need a pair of shears, the sharper the better because you are dealing with fabric. A pencil. Two sewing pins, not any kind with an end, but just a regular sewing pin, at least two. You might need more depending upon how your wrapping goes. And not pictured here, you will be needing an iron and an ironing board. So now that you've gotten everything assembled, it is time to start making the puggery. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to lay out your fabric onto some sort of long surface that you can work on. In this case, I was working on the deck, but I actually ended up moving inside because it was really hot out and it was not enjoyable. So once your fabric is all laid out and nice and flat, you're going to want to start to measure for cutting the puggery. So you're going to want to measure six inches from the edge and mark it. And you're gonna to wanna to mark that every now and again up the strip. Now, once you have marked the strip, you're going to connect the little marks that you made and it will turn into one singular line. And once that singular line is drawn, you're going to want to start to cut up it. And that will be the first start of the process of making the strip of fabric for the puggery. Now when you're cutting up that line, you don't need to be super, super worried about how straight it is, but it is important to be relatively straight whilst you're cutting it. And long cutting strokes really help to make sure you have a nice smooth line while cutting. Now if you have a friend on hand, it does help feeding the fabric back whilst you're cutting it. it just makes things go a little quicker and it you know, makes cutting a straight line slightly easier. Now, once you've cut it out, you will be left with a six inch strip of fabric. This six inch strip of fabric will end up being uh, folded down to a one and a half inch uh, strip of cloth. And that one and a half inch strip of cloth will be the basis for your puggery. I chose one and a half inches for the width of the puggery strap because that seems to be about the most common strip width for puggeries. Now, earlier I talked about how you could probably get a better color cloth, and that is the case, is this is a little lighter than I'd like, and it doesn't necessarily match too well with the helmet, or at least it doesn't match as well as I would like. As you can see on this helmet here of my mate Josh's, um, this is the cloth here, and it, you can, as you can see, it's not, the color contrast is, is a little more than I'd like, but it was okay for the first go. But in this instance, I actually did try to dye it a little bit by using some tea and, and putting the cloth in there. So I made a big old brew of tea in a sink and just put the strip in there. Now, when it came out, it wasn't still overly, overly dark as I might have liked, but it definitely did take it down a shade. Now, after I had taken it out of the sink, I brought it outside to dry in the sun. 
Now it is cotton, so you need to be careful that it doesn't shrink. So I put it out on the deck and I actually put some bricks on top of it so that it didn't actually uh, contract in while drying. If you do happen to dye it with tea, there is one thing you need to make sure you do. Make sure the tea cools down because if the tea does not cool down, you also risk shrinking the cotton. So be very, very careful. So now that we have the six inch strip, we are now going to take that to the ironing board and the iron. What we're going to do is flip it in half and then iron down it. And that will then give us a three inch strip that is X length long. So now that we have this three inch strip, we are going to pull it apart slightly and then fold it in. So we're going to fold it in and then fold it over in half and that's then the one and a half inch strip right there. And then we're going to do the same thing that we did before and iron it down the length of it. And once we've then ironed it down the length, we will be left with this. The one and a half inch strip that is ready to be wrapped into a puggery. Now most of this so far isn't necessarily so hard, it's just slightly labor intensive more than anything else. Now, the reason you fold the strip the way you do is that way you don't have any rough edges anywhere. It is a self-contained, uh, smooth strip of fabric. And this way you are able to wrap it around the helmet and it doesn't matter which way it goes. So when, if it, it's wrapped this way and then you, once you flip it going over, nothing shows, it is 100% self-contained edge. Because this is essentially four strips of fabric because it's been folded and, and ironed, you're kind of essentially adding uh, more thickness to the puggery. So that's how you get that really kind of thick shape that you see on puggeries. Now that we have our strip, uh, let's get wrapping. So the first thing we're going to want to do is to take the strip and pin it to the axis of the helmet. Now the reason you pin it to the axis of the helmet is that is where all of your wraps are going to meet when you fold the, uh, the, the, the strip over. So all we do is take the strip, grab a pin, and pin it at the axis. Now I am using an original helmet, so I am just putting the pin into the puggery that exists. I'm not actually sticking it directly into the helmet. Now if say you have a reproduction that has a puggery that already on it, you can just do what I did. Now if you have a reproduction that has no puggery at all, you can try and just stick it into the band that is around the helmet itself. If there is no band, you can just press it into the cork. It's not gonna be the end of the world because it is going to be covered, so it's not a big deal. And you're only gonna have two or three pins at most, so if you do have to put a pin in, it is really okay. It is not the end of the world. Now that we have it pinned in front, we are going to bring it to the back of the helmet, and we're just gonna find an appropriate height that we see fit or like in terms of how far we're bringing it up. And then we're going to make sure to bring it down to roughly the same height that it is in the front. And I'm gonna give it a little wrap. Have to give it that little wrap and we're gonna try and make it so that it intersects with the back. And again, that fold is with the back axis. So we're going to want the two, the, the strip, because we're gonna twist it over and we're gonna want it then to have a V. And we're gonna want that V to basically line up with the axis of the helmet, as you'll see in a moment. An important note when wrapping is to keep things as tight as possible so that way it is as tight to the helmet as possible and you don't get the fabric getting any weird shapes or anything like that. Now the back 
Once we've done the first half of it, we're gonna want to pin it again. We're pinning it again because this is one of the places where it is slightly more difficult to keep it from moving without a pin. If you get really good at this, you could do it without a pin, but if you do it without a pin, um, it is making life a little more difficult. One thing to keep in mind that when you are wrapping it, uh, the angle at the back of that fold, um, the fold base should be flat with the back of the brim of the helmet. That way you make sure that the angle coming in is the same as the angle coming out. And then once we have reached the back, we're going to wrap it forward again. And we're going to try to keep it the same height as we did going back. So you might just have to look at the helmet on a little bit just to adjust things a little. That's okay. And again, try and keep it as tight as possible. That way you don't get any weird things happening. And we get to the front. Just make sure that it once again meets up on the axis. And then you won't need a pin, but I'm going to use a pin because I'm trying to show you uh, and hold the place. But besides that, you should be all right. And so once you get to the front, it should make a nice V and that should get you off to a really good start. And from here, we just start wrapping. Um, it's that simple. Again, we just want to make sure we keep everything flat. And in terms of the spacing between the wraps, about a quarter of an inch uh, does just fine. Um, use your personal preference of what you think looks best, but it is not an exact, exact science, so it's no big deal either way. And from this point, you should not need any more pins as tension should keep it secured just fine. If you are finding that you're struggling a little bit, using a pin is totally acceptable. Once you finally get going, the wrapping goes generally pretty quick, all things considered compared to all the other processes. Just keep things tight. Whilst wrapping, I cannot stress enough how important it is to keep things tight. If you don't keep things tight, the puggery just starts to, to whack itself out. So try and keep it as tight as possible. Now, this time wrapping, I'm experiencing a little more difficulty keeping it more tight. This cloth doesn't already have a lot of elasticity to it. And after the dyeing process, it seems to have even less. So just be careful. And again, if you can find something that is more elastic than this, Go for it, um, but do what you can. This is just, this is giving me a little more trouble than the last one, but that's okay. As long as you can make it look decent, that's what we care about. And just as before, my back is looking nicer than the front. So we got that going. From the back, we have almost completed it. Now, if you're using a reproduction Wosley that does not have a puggery underneath. Um, you also give yourself an easier job as you're not covering up anything. Uh, this is giving you a little more trouble than you normally might because it does have something already on it. So it's giving it a little more girth too, which makes things a little more difficult. 
And this puggery is, uh, or is already on it, is a little thicker than most that are even on helmets that do come with one. So for you, it's also going to be a lot easier. One of the things I'm also not doing so well on this helmet is I didn't really pull it up high enough. Um, so I'm running out of room around the, the bottom here. That's okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we've gotten about seven on this one, but because I'm running out of room, I'm going to call it. And I'm just going to cut some off the end and wrap it underneath. Actually, that's still probably too much. So I'll have some more. Again, when you're also dealing with a longer piece of fabric, it makes it easier because then you can just work until you find that you have enough wraps and then you can just fold it over or under rather and call it a day. So I've folded the front uh, underneath. It's not as good as the last one I did, but it's gonna have to do for now. Um, I probably will end up rewrapping this some, at some point, but I, I do know that I'm going to also try and find a fabric that is a little more stretchier and has a little more uh, pull to it, like a like a putty, so that way it you know it, it's easier to get it tighter. But all in all, that is a finished puggery. Again, it's not overly, overly perfect, but it is a lot better than having no puggery at all. And a big thing is the fabric, again, which is really what's gonna make a puggery successful. But I think all in all, that's pretty good for what it is. So the big things to take away from this video when making a puggery. One, try and get fabric that is as stretchy as possible. Um, Cotton is obviously what is the most common, but if it's anything and it's stretchy and it's a natural fiber, then, and it looks right, uh, don't be afraid to use it. Secondly, it's okay to use a pin to help it stay tight. And thirdly, pull it and keep it as tight as possible as that is going to give you the best results. And then once you have gotten your puggery done, you get to put your flash on and make your helmet look even cooler. This one is a flash for the North Staffordshire Regiment in Mesopotamia in 1917. Uh, it's simply just a black diamond, but every unit would have their own flash. Um, sometimes it's easy to figure out uh, the flash that they had as in the North Staffordshire Regiment. Others are a little more complicated. For my Wales kit, I have not been able to find any documentation that shows what the flash is. So, you know, that might be a thing that you know, helps you determine what kind of kit you might choose because a flash is a very cool thing and really gives the helmet some extra character. So on that terrible, terrible disappointment, everyone, thanks for watching, and I hoped this helped you make your own puggery. Cheers. It's the soldiers of the king, my lads, who be my lads, who be my lads, in the fight for England's glory, lads, of its worldwide glory, let us see.